If you have a constant image height, scope, style, projection-based home theater setup, and you were curious how something like a MadVR NV video processor enhances the whole logistics and usability of the installation so you don't have to do the lens memory type thing manually, this is the video for you. Let's go through like my whole system setup of my JVC NX7 projector, the MadVR NV Extreme Mark II, and my 163 inch 235 to 1 Seymour AV screen with regards to how do these how do all these things work together basically to make it so you have completely hands-free aspect ratio management utilizing your screen maximizing your screen maximizing your screen brightness and as many pixels as you can get on the screen without having to do manual lens memory recall or advanced home automation programming to control those modes and manage the home theater setup. All right, so here we are down in the home theater, Kaleidoscape UI, again, 163 inch, 235 to one scope in all its glory. Let's kind of walk through the steps of how you kind of prepare your system, manage it, and how the MadVR kind of plays a role in all of this aspect ratio management. So whether you have a MadVR, whether you have a video processor or not, all the initial startup for a projection setup kind of really begins the same way. Uh, you put the projector at whatever throw distance you're able to achieve within your room. Ideally, you have the throw distance to meet the maximum sizing requirements and whatnot for your screen. And then we use the projection adjustments, lens control adjustments within the projector itself to be able to manage the squaring up and the layout uh, of the screen. So I'm shooting here a, a JVC NX7 about 18, little greater than 18 feet back, 150 inch wide scope screen, and I am able to fill it. So the operative thing to do essentially is to get everything nice and squared, get your boxes lined up on your left and right, your top and bottom, get everything as squared, do your tilt, do your yaw, adjust your feet if you're on, uh, if you're on a shelf, adjust your mount if you're hanging on a ceiling mount, but fundamentally, again, do whatever you can do to get this thing as square as possible. Not always 100% feasible to do that uh, in every room and every setup. Not every wall in your house is going to be completely square. Uh, you might have done the best job in the world and still be a little bit off, especially with a large screen in terms of your hanging angles and stuff like that. But you do the best you can. That's why our screens have usually have black velvet borders and our projectors have masking features uh, and the like to be able to make up for some of those slight imperfections. So here we are. I'm zoomed up so that the far edges of the panel of my projector line up with the far edges uh, of the screen space of my screen. And I meticulously uh, did a bunch of management in terms of zooming and shifting to try to get those lines just on to the border, just on, just outside of the screen space, just onto the velvet. Um, as best I can. Ideally, that's going to end up with the, the middle line essentially being in the middle of the screen. And we have overscan here. If you can see, hopefully, in the recorded image there, the little faint lines that are above my screen and below my screen, which is the actual edges of the projector panel itself. Now, one other thing to keep in mind, particularly if you have something like a JVC, is your projector may actually be 4,096 pixels wide rather than 3,840 pixels wide. And when it comes uh, to that availability uh, of the pixel size of the panel, I think it's a better option to go ahead and use all the pixels that you can, particularly with the video processor doing really, really excellent algorithmic upscaling and pixel mapping and pixel management. I don't think there's going to be a detriment. I don't think there's any detriment to letting the image scale uh, for the benefit of having those extra pixels used on the screen. It's more sharpness, it's more addressable pixels, it's more light uh, that you're able to get onto the screen and out of the image as well. Now I have the projector settings saved into one of the lens memories, JVC calls them installation modes. Um, I named it specifically MadVR. We can see in the list there over to the right that I have a variety of other ones saved previously that allow me to use different levels of zoom and shift to fill the screen vertically with a 16.9 image, with a 185 to 1 image, and with wider 235 
CinemaScope aspect ratios as well. <clears throat> so prior to having the Mad VR in the, in the installation, I would either have to manually switch between these modes or use something intelligent in my Control 4 automation system to be able to trigger these specific modes. But right away, adding the video processor means fundamentally that we have one uh, and we want to maintain effectively one installation mode, one's me one lens memory setting, regardless of the aspect ratio and the details of the source content, the Mad VR is going to take care of all of that for us. Um, other settings to note, I'm not using a lens here, so there's no anamorphic settings or no anamorphic management being done, either in the processor itself or uh, in the projector. Uh, and key to note, talking about that 4096 wide pixel use, you can actually have the projector do that if you use what they call the zoom aspect. Note, however, though, that I'm setting to auto, which means the projector isn't doing the upscaling, essentially, and the zooming to fill that extra pixel space. I'm having the Mad VR video processor do it by setting the Mad VR itself to 4096 pixels wide. We'll show some of the Mad VR menus in just a moment. So right away this lends itself to a bit of a superior setup versus doing the lens memory things. Lens memory recall is a bit of a slow process. The projector has to mechanically move uh, the image assembly inside the unit. And one of the other things that you can get as you're using lens memories is that it's never going to necessarily go exactly to the same locations with 100% precision every time over time. And so being able to leave the projector uh, in a fixed installation mode versus changing it always gives you <clears throat> gives you the assurance of not having kind of that positioning drift uh, over over time that you may see when you when you when you use the lens memory options. So fundamentally, what we have here now is what we call a constant image height or a CIH style setup. So regardless of what the source content uh, is, I'm always going to fill the screen from the top to the bottom and the source content itself will define how much of the width of the screen um, is addressed by the content and then I can make choices within the Mad VR itself to determine okay do I want to use things like nonlinear stretch and fill more uh, of the dead space of the width of the screen if I so chose right you could basically fill the entire width uh, of a screen size like this regardless of the aspect ratio of the source content all the time every time but you'd have to manage the stretch settings and be comfortable with them uh, in order to do that. So if I go into the Mad VR configurations, a couple things specifically to point out in here. First off, display configuration. Again, my resolution is set to that 4096 by 2160. Note that 3840 by 2160 is also selectable. And some projectors have the 4096 wide panel and some don't so you have to just make these adjustments according to the capabilities uh, of your projector so at this point the projector is set and stable it's not moving it's been zoomed focused and shifted to fill the screen exactly how I want it to in the mad VR I'm going to come in and adjust the screen boundaries assistant what this allows us to do effectively then is to tell the mad VR what pixel space is it operating within. So I, ha I have these available crossovers uh, in each of the corners that I can kind of raise and lower the screen boundaries. And what we're looking to do here fundamentally is get these boundaries so that our screen image is filled. Again, we're going to have little imperfections. So like the upper right and the bottom right are not necessarily going to be always in direct 90 degree perfect straight up and down. Uh, and from bottom, say bottom right to bottom left, right, completely level uh, alignment with each other. But you want to be able to make these really fine adjustments. And if I click into one of these, I can use the arrow markers of the Mad VR remote to move these things in, move them out, and arrange for the specific fill of the screen that I'm looking for. And again, account for those alignment and and pixel boundary imperfections. Once this set, essentially the Mad VR is going to take any of its source images and apply its processing, apply its scaling to put the content image in the screen space that has been defined. 
There is an extra step you can do if you are in fact using a lens. There's extra steps of configuration and alignment. We have options for geometry correction and things like that. I don't want to go down the road of that in this video. I don't actually have a lens to configure. Uh, so from, the perspective, from our perspective here, we're talking about just, again, a general system, general alignment, no lens, video processor, projector, and screen. Uh, you might ask how this plays with regards to black bar detection, subtitle adjustments, and so on. I do want to address that more fully in another topic, so look for another video, a future video on the channel specifically there. I want to focus this one on kind of just the, the general arrangement, alignment, and kind of ramifications of making this connection between the processor and the display device. The nice thing about this now is we're basically kind of fully configured for a base cinematic, really truly cinematic experience in the home theater. Kaleidoscape thankfully lets us actually define scope based menu systems, basically put the UI uh, in this scope aspect ratio. I have a video on the channel uh, all about that actually and showing how to do that. So we're completely filling the screen with this awesome movie poster wall and if I were to start say a piece of content like across the spider-verse that is in a scope aspect ratio. All right, I'll pause here. I don't want to play any video so that we have <laughs> we don't have any copy protection takedowns and whatnot but very directly now we're completely filling. MadVR is taking that source content uh, image which is a 3840 by 2160 but it's a scope image within that that natively like 4k field it's being scaled it's being processed and it's being applied to fill the screen space in this awesome one-to-one -one mapping no need to stretch anything no need to manipulate the image in any way other than essentially a pixel scaling in the original aspect ratio I would still strongly contend that if you're considering a home theater build, ultra widescreen scope aspect ratio uh, as tall as you can get it so that you can still maximize the natural height of a 16.9 piece of content is the way to go. The immersiveness and the presentation of watching cinematic content down here is just second to none. And not even for movies, but a lot of, say, marquee television shows that we watch on uh, exclusive streaming platforms and stuff like that nowadays increasingly so finding a lot of extra wide scope style television content as well or something potentially even in between 16.9 uh, and full scope which the mad vr is specially prepared to handle all right so here we are back at the kaleidoscape menu and the next thing that we kind of want to look at with regards to this conversation is custom zoom configuration which directly relates to stretch capabilities of the mad vr so my screen is natively 235 to 1 i'm going to go ahead and run the stretching assistant at that aspect ratio and it might be a little bit hard to read but i want to keep the full field image in view we can see that for 235 to 1 source content the custom zoom configuration the stretching nonlinear stretching manipulation aspects of the mad vr here are disabled there's no reason to do it it's one-to-one -one, uh, with exactly what we're dealing with in the screen image. In fact, if I go a little bit wider, because I've got a little bit of overscan, you're always gonna have, again, a little bit of overscan, a little bit of crop, kind of these, these slight little compromises right around the edges of the screen to, to deal with the imperfections of the reality of space and construction. 240 to one uh, is disabled as well, maps exactly the same way. Um, but if I go up the line here, we can see like a 255 to 1 aspect ratio gets a little bit wider. Now I've got some black space at the top and bottom of my screen. The, the Mad VR allows configure, specific configuration options um, and detection all the way up to like a 276 to 1 aspect ratio. I'm not sure that I've, I've ever actually seen content that goes this wide. However, if you wanted to, you would be able to turn these stretching options on and fill that little bit of vertical space above and below the image. I've just generally been keeping these off again because it's, I, I don't think it's been common to ever necessarily encounter content that's actually that wide. Usually content um, watching movies, the stuff that we tend to watch falls up to 240 and not any wider than that. Um, it's when we go down the scale where constant image height, again, we're always filling vertically, 
until we go wider than the native aspect ratio of the screen. However, when we're getting into content that's just as, that can be just as tall, constant image height, but not as wide, is where these stretching capabilities and options and features come into play if you so choose to use them. So if I look at the native presentation of a 2.2 image, we can see I've got like a few inches of black space on the far left and the far right of the image there. However, I've made a number of adjustments. I've applied a little bit of crop. I've applied what they call a little bit of center stretch and I've applied different levels of strength and uh, area, screen space area, usually in thirds. This is basically the default of the Mad VR in order to do some multi-directional stretching and arrive at an image that I feel looks uh, very, very true to the original aspect ratio image. However, gives the ability to completely fill the screen out to the sides. Now I will admit these settings are, are settings that I'm still kind of tweaking to taste and kind of looking to refine my skills with a bit in order to both achieve the fill and achieve the fill without any noticeable, uh, say, degradation of the way things present in the images. P particularly the main thing that you're looking for is to try to keep geometry looking the same. We can see like the circles on those cups out to the edges. They do go a little bit wider um, than in with the NLS applied versus without. I may be able to still achieve a slightly better result than what I'm getting. It's just a matter of time and learning and, and adjusting further to taste. So I have been running the horizontal, the nonlinear stretch, the horizontal fill basically down through a couple of the core aspect ratios from 2.2 to 2.0. Uh, however, again, the, the further we go down in aspect ratio, the more black space there is, the more the image needs to be stretched to fill, the more careful you may have to be, the more sensitive you may be to specific like geometry distortions and whatnot. And you wouldn't want seeing those to take kind of you out of the content experience or out of the experience of watching the movie. But this is all very much to taste. The nice thing about something like the Mad VR is you have utter, utter control over this. Uh, you can choose essentially at what point, like, do you no longer want to stretch? So I stopped stretching down at 16 by 9 with this current configuration I'm running here. So even 185 to 1, I am going ahead and stretching. And now we're getting to the point where actually we're filling quite a lot uh, of dead space out to the left and right. And I, and I haven't still then fully arrived at my, my kind of stretch to taste. One of the other things that I could do with this is available is you don't even necessarily have to stretch all the way out to fill the screen space. So if I were to turn 185 to one off, perhaps maybe what you're looking to do is maybe you could stretch half the screen space away, right? So instead of having so much dead space on the far left and right, go ahead and fill half of it with less stretching for potentially less geometry distortion and noticeable stretching effect, but still getting more value using more pixels, getting a brighter image and utilizing more of the screen. I have decided, or I have been running the system for a little while now, effectively not stretching 177 to one. That's largely because uh, a significant portion of the use of this in our system is an Apple TV and Apple TV's menus are in 16.9 and that I think is one of the most visibly, <laughs> visibly distortable things when you're looking at something that has a UI where you have rectangles and curves and lines that you're used to seeing in certain places. And when they're being stretched to a significant degree, kind of ch ch changes the imagery quite a bit. However, in content, now nah, maybe not so much, right? You, you may be able to arrive at a happy uh, NLS even for 16.9 content. Something that I could set up conceivably in like control for would be if I press play, let's go ahead and engage NLS. If I press stop, let's go ahead and disengage NLS and then use the triggers of the remote going into and coming out of content, perhaps to, to provide stretching for content, but not stretching for menus. Um, if you make changes in here, you can commit then. I'm gonna go ahead and just basically revert all of my settings back to what was in there before, just in case I did actually make any tweaks with what I was doing. But abs absolute control, absolute freedom of management, absolute adjustment to taste. We can even go ahead and show off that Apple TV menu briefly here. Switch over to the Apple TV. 
So we can see what this looks like. It's showing up in native aspect ratio here. However, if I go ahead and engage those NLS settings, we can see everything gets a little wider. In particular, the icons far out to the edge of the screen are much wider than the icons in the middle. This is about as worst case scenario as you can get, but I wanna show it just so that you can kind of really understand what you're working with with these types uh, of devices. And again, I think there's a lot more flexibility to arrive at something that could look significantly better than this or a compromise in between. Um, I'm still working on it, but for now, I, I just have been choosing not to engage NLS for this aspect ratio. I also do have masking panels for 16 by nine, so it's very easy for me to make the choice to go ahead and grab the masking panels out and toss them up on the screen. Uh, if we are watching a, a 16 by nine movie and decide that we wanna go that way for kind of the, the maximum black level and presentation and performance. So there you go. If you have a projection set up, you've been using lens memories like I had been for quite a while, you're getting tired of it, and you're looking for something to kind of automate the process, set it once, forget it, and have it all work in just an automatic, absolutely fantastic fashion. <laughs> Mad VR Envy might just be your ticket. One thing to note when you're doing this is you are, you are changing some of the pixel mappings versus using the lens memories. Uh, note that if you're using lens memories and you have a 16 by nine lens memory, the content and what you're seeing on your screen really become a true one-to-one -one pixel mapping. However, now in, the, in these modes, remember we're using a zoomed up mode. We're pushing pixels off the top and bottom of the screen. So a 16-9 image is essentially being scaled into a bit of a smaller pixel space. However, um, I can't say that I noticed like a decrease in sharpness or resolution as a result of that. And by and large, if you're using your theater for movies primarily, or again, like those kind of like latest, greatest, top end, high end TV shows, you're probably consuming a lot more wider than 16.9 content than perhaps 16 by nine itself anyway. The NV as it runs is constantly detecting the aspect ratios of the content and, and identifying and scaling and kicking the pixel usage, the mapping, and whether you have the NLS settings on or off. Uh, to apply essentially all of this. And the, the more that I operate my system with the video processor, the harder it may be to ever go back to a lens memory based setup uh, in the future again. So if you have any questions, please post them in the comments. Let's discuss if you're using a video processor, you have a Mad VR, and you're taking advantage of features like this, let me know how. Share it in the comments so that other people can learn from your experience as other folks may be considering adding something like this to their setup. Of course, if you want to buy one of these or a whole bunch of other home theater equipment, hey, I know a bunch of folks, uh, my affiliates, Audio Advice, and others that I can refer you to. Shop at Audio Advice using the links down in the description. Mention Techthusiasm over the phone. Or if you need specific help with an element of your system, sourcing something for it, reach out to me directly. I can see what you're looking for and put you in touch with a, a best source for whatever that need may be. If you want some help with your home theater system, hey, I do consulting calls. I can help guide, teach, and advise on setting all of this stuff up. And additionally, if you'd like to support the channel, hey, leave a super thanks, PayPal Venmo tip, or just generally shop at some of the other affiliates like Amazon, Best Buy, and others, again, all down in the description. Thanks so much for watching. Please do all that regular YouTube stuff, like, subscribe, hit the bell, share the video, and come on back for a whole lot more technical home theater discussion and fun.